Hey everyone, today I want to share with you a new method or a method that we use to put our side seams or our piping onto our back panels uh, and then actually side seaming the boot itself. You have requested some of these videos and I want to say thank you for watching and tuning in. Also, if you wouldn't mind, just subscribe, hit the button below here, give us a thumbs up and let us know what you think about these videos and we will certainly continue to try to do uh, the videos that you guys want. Here we go. What you see me doing here is basically gluing about an eighth inch up on this piece of side seam, which is basically uh, the same material as I use for my piping, as you see here, my top bead. Uh, the same material, just turned over on itself so you got a three-quarter inch piece of or strip of that material and you just turn it over on itself and then you're just gonna glue about an eighth inch up or basically down the entire length of it so again the same thing on the back panel again we're not gonna glue the front panel. We're not going to be sticking our piping material or our side seam to our front panel. We'll be sticking it to the back panel. And we are using this glue is called Jet Set All Time. It is all purpose contact cement. It is not rubber cement. So there you see, we have the side seams or the sides of our back panel prepared with glue. Our side seams themselves are glued. So we will wait for those to dry and then we'll stick them. Okay, so we're gonna stick the top here and I'm gonna go only to the top of the top panel. I'm not going to actually go all the way to the top of the top bead. And that's just something that I do. You don't have to do that. And we're just going to flush everything up. So there you see the side seam is attached. So you see I left my side seams long. I'm just going to go ahead and trim those. I'll leave a little extra on the end. Okay, so like I said, we're not going to sew the side seams to the back panel. We have glued them and now in order for us to get the front panel to the back panel, we are going to staple it. Simply what we do is we take this heavy duty stapler. This is a Bostage B30, B310 HDS, heavy duty stapler, B310, and I'll put that on the video. What this stapler does is it goes up to 5 eighths staple, which is enough to get through your hard counter, your counter cover, your vamp, and your vamp lining with one shot, which is pretty awesome because again, it holds it all together while you sew it. So you're gonna sew to the inside of your staples. Here we go. All right, so you're gonna see me kind of hunker down on this stapler. The most crucial part about side seaming a pair of cowboy boots or four piece boots is getting the counter cover and vamp points to line up. So that's where we start. We make sure we got those lined up and then we staple. And you see that staple went all the way through. And then I'm gonna go up one from there 
and I'm about, oh, I don't know, very, I'm very close to the edge. Because again, I'm going to sew to the inside of these staples. So now I can go down here, and now you start to see how why it's so difficult because I've got this draft going that far forward. It's difficult to try to get all this material where you want it and going in the right direction. But you see, I just stapled right through that hard counter. And the side seam, and the vamp, and the vamp lining. So you see, it's going through a lot of material. You have to have the 5 8 staple to make this happen. Last one. So now that we've got our points stapled together all the way down to the bottom of the hard counter, we're going to go all the way back to the top now and line the top beads up and then staple those. And you see how close to the edge. And now we're just going to go all the way back down the side seam, just keeping everything nice and flush as we go. This this takes getting used to. You're not going to just simply do it with ease the first few times. It's it's something that I've practiced. I will say this: the machine that we use, the side seam, will stitch through a staple. We have done it on purpose. You see now. Those staples went all the way through easily. And we'll pull those out after we sew. So the one side is done, which makes the other side, of course, way more difficult because you've got to bunch the leather up and you're, again, you're still trying to line the points up. So you've really got to get down here with this stapler. Get a peek at where you are. It might even help, too, if you'll make a mark where, the, where that is so it's a little easier to see. That way you can just line the lines up. Sometimes you have to use a pen instead of a silver pen to do this. So you can see. I think I'm pretty close now. We're going to give it one more shot. Yep, we got it. All right, so we're gonna go down the hard counter. Okay, you see, those staples are really close to the edge, which is going to make me have an easy time sewing it. So let's go do that. Okay, here we are about to sew up the side seams on the harness stitcher. This is a cylinder arm of Peterson number nine. Uh, this is old world technology. We're going to show you how we would basically side seam this this boot going to the inside of the staples and I've got a guide set up on here and uh, we're just gonna we're gonna get to it this is size 207 I you know you could use thicker I have used thicker but this seems to work all right and we're gonna get going here okay so you can see this is a one-sided pressure foot. This machine comes with several different feet. I like it for doing this job. And then this guide is really awesome because you can set the, the distance you want that thing to, to sew. 
And of course, I've got it set up pretty much all the time for, for side seam. So, nice thing about this machine is the hand crank because you can get really, really close and meticulous with your needle. Now when you get to the hard counter, of course you've got more material and stiffer material. You're going to want to take your time and make sure you stay to the inside of those staples. Okay, so we've got the side seaming done and now we just need to take these staples out. So I simply use a heel pry just took it off the bench and get up under the staple it's about the exact same size and just pop one side out again you're just trying to not tear up the boot at this point and take these staples out without gouging anything or tearing anything up same with the heel pry make sure that you're guarding it so I simply use my thumb as a guard keep from tearing up the boot. I have a weak, weak point in them. But then we just simply, what I do is just twirl that little staple right out. You got one side pulled, you can just twirl it out with a simple turn of the pliers. And that makes everything happen really nice. So now we've got all the staples pulled from the top side I think there's maybe one or two parts that we can see from the back side. Yeah, there's one. Pull that, there's another. These two just simply broke when we were pulling them out. And so that's done. It's clean of staples. Now, the beauty of us doing it this way is what you'll see in the end is when I go to sand this excess material out, we don't just simply rub the side seams. We will actually sand out the material. So there is two things you're doing. You are able to really get a smooth inside side seam because not only are we going to sand them, we're going to hammer them flat. And you're also going to take out some weight, which is always good. And then on these you just want to burn them. And the last thing you're doing is you'll notice that, again, we did not sew these on with a flatbed machine. So what does that, what does that do for us? Well, when I sand into this to cut out the excess material, I'm never going to get into a sew line. And a lot of times I have seen in boots where they will come back and sand these, but they'll get into the sew line where they sewed, where they were sewing the side seam to the top panel. And I just think that's ugly and it usually doesn't feel well either. It just kind of gives a sawtooth edge to the inside of the side seam. Now you see what I'm doing here is I'm simply going to tie these loose threads off and the way we do it is the way I was taught is to just bring this thread over the top of the top bead. You see what that'll do is it'll lock everything in. Then come back around from the other side. This is just a standard jerk needle, number five. This is what we welt with as well. And then just carefully pull it through. And now you've got both threads going over the top of the side seam and the top bead. And now, I'm just gonna go down one more stitch, go all the way through, pull one side through, preferably without tearing up your thread. And if you'll just work that, you see like I just did there, it'll be fine. 
and then tie it off. Two knots. Now you might think, well that would be enough. No, I like to go ahead and pull that knot all the way through to the middle. So go back through the same hole, take one of the sides, grab it, pull it all the way through, and then pull your knot to the middle. If you can. There we go. So then we just gotta cut the excess off. burn it down. So I told you about sanding out the excess material. You see there's a little more than an eighth of an inch of material beyond the sew line. Um, we want to go ahead and sand a little bit of that out. Taking out you know the weight and the excess material and also smoothing it out. The first pass I'm going to make is on the rough paper. And this is 30 grit, uh, just our regular grinder here. And that'll take most of the material out. Then we'll hit it on the smooth sander and be done with it. Okay, so you see, got down to pretty close, taking out about a half of that excess material. And that leaves us with just enough to be comfortable with to last the life of the boot on the side seam. But now it's time to smooth it completely out so we have a nice, comfortable side seam. So you see, got that nice and flat, and we, we've not really rubbed on anything, put it on a board or, or anything like that, but we've got a nice flat side seam, and it's very, very soft. So we've achieved what we're really trying to achieve with the side seam, uh, because it has to be there. Uh, we want it flat, and we want it smooth. And we've got both of those, so it's flat, smooth, and soft. So now we just got to turn it, and then we'll show you how we hammer those side seams out, and we'll be done. Okay, so we're going to take our regular repair jack, which most of the shops that I know of would have one. You can use an anvil or whatever, but because it's metal and we're dealing with uh, a wet hard counter in here, we're going to cover this with a, just a simple Walmart sack or a grocery sack. We're going to go ahead and wet this hard counter again because we're going to try to manipulate that to where it's nice and flat when we get done with it here. And I'm going to go ahead and wet the outers too here, the top panel shaft. And then we're going to take a regular hammer. I'm not hitting that hard, just a short, short throw here on this hammer. Look how nice that gets that, really flat. And then we'll come around from the other side. We'll kind of go ahead and manipulate this thing. You'll be amazed at how flat you can get that side seam with just that simple technique. All right, we are to the process now where we have treed the boot. Of course, we're using Mallory stretchers that I have extenders on. You see that, and we 
put extenders on for really tall top boots. It's really easy to do. Um, but we're we're ready to let it dry. And I didn't get it saturated. Just got it wet enough to, to get a good shape. Once it dries, it'll hold its shape while we last. And then likely at the end, we'll tree as well. So again, hopefully today you've learned something that maybe you haven't seen before. And that's how to basically side seam a cowboy boot or a four piece boot without sewing your side bead or your side seam to the panel before you actually sew the boot completely together. A little trick that I learned, again, I was taught to do this over 15 years ago, and it really worked for us. You just need a great heavy duty stapler, and I prefer this one, staples, and just some patience. It really is, uh, when it comes to side seaming, it's all about being patient and being methodical. And I like to, you know, have, that's, this is really where the rubber meets the road for us bootmakers. You know, where you have these sides coming together, you really want it to look really nice. And you see this one comes together really nice. So again, I thank you for uh, watching and tuning in. If you would, please subscribe below and stay tuned for a lot more videos that we're gonna try to do. And hopefully, uh, eventually, it'll be to where you guys can request something and we can get it up pretty quick for you so you can see how to do these processes the way we do it. Again, we're just doing it the way that we have honed and trying to perfect over the years. Also, if you have any further questions, you can email us. And if you really, really try hard, sometimes you can get a hold of us here. You can call me, and I've even Skyped or FaceTimed people through some processes. So don't be afraid to call us. We're here and open to help you as much as we possibly can, as well as we're also willing to learn from you. So if you have some comments or different things and techniques that you do, Feel free to share them with us. We'd love to see how you do it and learn from you as well. So thank you for your time and we'll see you soon.